G'day gamers. If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. G'day gamers. Before we start, if you're interested in using GML in Game Maker, then check out my Udemy course in the description where you can use the coupon code and get over 90% off the retail price. Now, we've already set up the horizontal and vertical collisions, so if you've missed that, check out the description for links to the previous videos. In this video, we'll add the sprites for the player. So continuing on from what we've done in the last tutorial, we have a player that moves horizontally and vertically, and we can also do a jump. So let's go into the sprite and add the player sprites. So over here, if you're in the player object, there's an edit sprite button. Let's click that. It'll take you to the sprite that we've already created. So all the sprites that I'm using are from the Open Pixel project. It's a website that I've put a link in the description to where you can get some free graphics and use those in your games. Now we can click on import and bring the player sprite in that way. I prefer to just go to Windows Explorer, find what you're after, and then drag it across to the window. So once you've downloaded the sprites, just put them into a folder. And then what you can do is click and drag that into Game Maker and it brings it across automatically. Now because this idle sprite has the name strip six at the end, it automatically knows that there are six images and it will bring them in and put them as frames. So you can click play just to have a look at the animation. And here's where we set the speed of how fast the animation will play. So I'm gonna set it to a speed of eight and that makes him look like he's breathing a little bit better. Now as well as bringing the sprite in, there is also a collision mask, and that is what is used to indicate when a collision happens with this sprite. So I'm going to change it to manual because at the moment it's taking up the whole sprite and that's not really what I want. I'm going to set the left to 13, I'm going to set the top to 14, I'm going to set the right to 29, and the bottom can stay at 60. So it gives us a mask around the player that is a bit more fair when you come to doing collisions with walls and, and uh, enemies. And the last thing to do is just name this and I'm going to put underscore idle at the end. This is our idle sprite. So now if we click play, we should find that we have our player sprite in the game. Great, that's looking better. And when we move, as you can see, nothing happens. We just get a sliding player, but the collisions are working fine. So let's add the walking animation as well. Let's duplicate this one. So control D, you can right click and go to duplicate or just press control D. And I'm going to call that S underscore player underscore walk. So let's bring in the walk animation. So the same thing, you just want to click and drag it across and that should then come in correctly. Now if you click play, you should get a running or walking animation. Now I'm just going to leave the speed at eight. So let's duplicate that again. And I'm going to call this one air, so s underscore player underscore air. And let's bring in the air sprite. Now this is just a jumping up and a falling down animation. And because we don't want this to cycle through the animation, I'm going to set the speed to be zero. So when we're up, we'll just use that one frame. And then we're coming down, we'll use that one. So let's go to our player. So over here, there's a section on collision mask. At the moment, it's set to same as Sprite. Let's change that and change it to the S player idle Sprite, which means that the idle will be used for collision masks. Because what can happen is when you change sprites, the mask changes as well, and that can cause you to have collisions. So if you just set one mask for all the sprites, it'll make it much easier. So now we need to assign the right sprite for when the player is doing certain things, whether they're standing still, or they're moving, or they're jumping, we want a particular sprite to apply. Now what we're going to set up for the player is also how we want our enemies to be set up later on. When you want multiple objects to use the same code, we can take advantage of parenting. And parenting means we set up one object and make other objects the children of that parent object. They will then inherit the events and variables of the parent object. So let's create a parent object for our entities. And by that, I mean our player and our enemies. So let's duplicate O player. And I'm going to call this O entity. 
Now I'm just going to remove these events because the player already has these events, so we don't need them in here. Now I'm just going to remove the sprite because we don't want to get confused. We don't need a sprite on this. And for the collision mask, we'll just put it the same as the sprite. This will actually never be in the game, so it doesn't really matter, but it's just so when I look over here, I know which one the player is just from looking at the icon. So what we can do is go to the parent section of the entity and under children, I'm going to drag across the player. So now if we look at variable definitions, all of these variables are created in the entity and because oplayer is a child of that, they also get created in the player. Now we know that these are already in the player, so let's go there and let's now delete them because we don't need them to be created. So you'll see that they're grayed out and that means they're coming from the parent. But if we scroll down, they're also not grayed out, and that's because they were there originally. If you remember, we, we created them. So there are some of these that we want to keep and some of them that will be inherited. So let's delete HSP. Let's delete VSP, and these are the white ones because these are the ones that are in the player. We can delete the drag, and we can delete the facing. Now walk speed and jump speed will be dependent on the object. So the player will have different walk speeds and different jump speeds than say an enemy might have. So I'm going to keep those as white, meaning that they are from the player. Now if you go up, even though these are being inherited, the walk speed is here. Because this one happens afterwards, this is the one that will be set for the player. So let's jump back to our entity and let's create the variables that we're going to need for the sprites. So let's click on add and we're going to need an SPR underscore idle. I'm just going to set it to S underscore player underscore idle. So by setting this variable we're then able to say what sprite we want this object to use. So for the player this works great but when we create the enemy we'll just change this and say S underscore enemy idle and then the enemy will get a different sprite when they are idle. So by doing it this way, it means that we have an idle variable that just points directly to which sprite we want that object to use. So we can have multiple objects and just change this one variable and they'll all still use the code that we're going to set later on. It's a really flexible way of creating multiple objects and not having to do a lot of work later on. There's a bit of setup initially, but the payoff later on is really beneficial. So let's also create one for SPR underscore walk. And we're going to set that to player walk. And the last one is SPR underscore air. I'm going to set it to S underscore player underscore air. Great, so we've set up the sprites. Now let's apply them when the player does various things like walking idling or being in the air. And we do that in our anim script. So let's have a look at this. So here's where we're just setting the facing direction. But we can also set the sprite here too. So if our HSP is not equal to zero, then we are moving. So that means that we would want to have a walking animation. So let's go to assign a variable and we'll set our sprite index, which is the sprite that we are using. And let's set it to SPR underscore walk. And that's our variable that we just created, which points to the walking sprite. It's also worth noting you can use the set instance variable block to assign the sprite. You just select sprite and then type the name of the sprite. In our case, we're using the variable SPR underscore walk. So it's up to you which one you want to use. I'm just going to assign it via the sprite index for now. Now, if our HSP is not equal to zero, we are walking. If our HSP is equal to zero, I'm going to put an else in here. And that means that we are not walking. So let's set our sprite index to our SPR underscore idle variable and the idle variable points to the idle sprite. So by doing it this way it means that our anim script can be used for an enemy too and once we set SPR walk and SPR idle 
in the enemy's variable definitions, they will get the appropriate sprite for them walking or being idle. Now the other thing we didn't cater for here is if we are in the air, we want to get the air sprite. Whether our HSP is equal to zero or not, we just want to have the air sprite. So in order to assign an air sprite, we need to know when the player is off the ground. So let's create a variable and a script that we can use to check if that happens. So let's go to O entity. And I'm going to create a new variable and I'm going to call it on underscore ground. I'm going to change it from real. Real is just a number. And I'm going to set it to Boolean. Boolean means whether it's true or false. And we'll set it to false to start with. So let's create a new script and this script will be used to check if we're on the ground. So let's call it check underscore ground. Now in order to check if we're on the ground, we can look to see if the solid object is directly below us. So let's do a check here. I'm going to drag across the object at place and I'm going to look for the solid. Now the X doesn't matter so we want to keep that relative at zero. Now for Y, I want to set it at relative, but I want to check out our Y position plus our global dot grav. So we're just checking for Y plus the gravity. And the gravity is only a small amount, it's like 0.3. So we're looking at just a little bit below where the player is. And is there an object there? Is O solid there? If O solid is there, that means we're on the ground. So if we're on the ground, let's assign our variable which is called on ground and let's set it to true else if we are not on the ground let's assign our variable on ground and let's set it to false so now that we've created the script we need to ensure that we're running it so let's go back to our player so let's place it just after we do our calc movement so I'm going to take that copy paste and that gives us another calc movement and then we can just change it and put it at check ground. So now whenever on ground is true it means we are on the ground so let's go back to our anim and let's apply that. So we need to apply our on ground script. Here we're assigning a walk animation and here we're assigning an idle animation. So before we assign that let's check to see if we're actually on the ground. So we want to test for on ground and if that's equal to true, then we know we want to have the walk or the idle applied. So let's select the green here and also scroll down and select, hold down control and select the else. And let's put those in the if here. And now we need an else. So if we're not on the ground, then we want to apply our air sprite. So as I mentioned before, you can set the instance this way by choosing sprite. So I want to do it both ways to at least show you that both can be used. So let's press F5 to test that or you can press the run button, whatever you choose. So now when we jump we have our air sprite and when we're on the ground we have our walk sprite. Now one thing you'll notice is when you stop your player continues to run. So what's happening there is our HSP is not becoming zero quickly enough and we're not changing to our idle sprite quickly enough. So let's go to our calc movement and let's add a check here. Now what we want to look at is our HSP and we want to see if it's close to zero. And if it is, then we'll make it zero. So we'll help it along a little. Now because HSP can be negative or positive depending which way you're moving, we want to look at the ABS of HSP. And ABS will make it an absolute value which means it's always above zero. And if our ABS of HSP is say less than 0 0.2, well then we'll help it along and say that that's close enough to zero, let's make HSP zero if that's the case. So let's run that again. And now when we move, we'll get that slowdown happening a lot quicker and we'll change to the idle sprite a lot quicker. So next I want to look at the jumping. We're not getting the correct frame for when we jump. If you recall in our air animation we have a frame showing an up and a frame that I want to use for going down. So these are referred to as the image indexes. This is image index 0, this is image index 1. 
So when we're moving up, I want image index 0 to be showing. And when we're moving down, I want image index 1 to be showing. So let's go to our Anim. And down here, where we're changing to our Air Sprite, let's ask a question. Now when we're moving up, I want image index 0 to be showing. And when we're moving up, it means our VSP is less than 0. So when it's less than 0, I want to show image index 0. And we can choose image index as part of the set instant variable block. And let's put an else in here and say if it's not less than 0, well then we want to set it to 1. So let's run that and see what it looks like. So now when we jump, we get a different image index depending if we're going up or down. Now you may notice that if you try to jump and go backwards, the player doesn't flip around. And the reason that happens is because we set our facing only when we're on the ground. Because we're checking on ground and then we go down here and we set facing here. So these four blocks which are used to set which way the player is facing. You could make a script out of those. You could copy and paste those into a new script and then you'd run the script here and then you'd also run the script down here. So you could do that if you choose. Now the last thing I want to change is that the player should only be able to jump when they're on the ground. At the moment we can jump while we're in the air but we have a way of determining if we're on the ground. It's our script that sets a variable called on ground. So let's use that in our check jump. And let's say if on ground is true, well then we will enable the jump. The last time, let's run that now, and we should only be able to jump when we're on the ground. So now in the air, I can't continue to press space, and I don't get that jump happening. Now that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.